So perfect. Uh, so thank you uh, to the chair Anna uh, for introducing us. Uh, so uh, indeed, uh, we are trying to. Well, our project name is SpotCure, which is the main the main uh, issue here. We're trying to solve is quickly identifying diseases or what is happening. And this is a collaboration between uh, UFA and UDS. So I would like to also introduce my colleagues. So uh, who I work with. So it's me, Raja Pitian. Then uh, it's Elizabeth, Baba. Uh, Joseph, Shadrach, and Samuel. So, uh, in order to understand uh, initially what project is, we need to understand what is their problem, the farmers. And uh, the problem is that uh, while uh, farmers try to uh, harvest their crops, the biggest issue they sometimes uh, encounter is detecting the disease in early stages. So sometimes they detect it too late, which is which meant that most of the crops is lost and they cannot do anything about it. No cure can help, or they do not detect it at all. Um, an important uh, thing to mention uh, is that the, we are uh, solving two of the uh, sustainable uh, development goals, uh, which is no poverty and zero hunger, uh, in this case. And uh, we think of a solution that would be able to solve their problems. So because we know they lack the knowledge sometimes uh, of detecting what kind of disease the plants might have, we thought of a, an AI solution that would be able to detect uh, diseases in the plants by using just a picture of it. But uh, as uh, every problem before starting and designing, we need to do some research in this area. What can be done in this case to get the, our ideas into reality? And the first thing we did was uh, having a questionnaire. So we asked uh, 11 farmers uh, with the help of uh, Baba and Shadrach, they went to the different locations in Ghana and asked farmers uh, what their issues were. So we conducted a questionnaire of 22 questions and uh, here are the important ones. So the first question that uh, was really important to us, uh, if the uh, farmers faced any challenges and all of them replied that they did indeed and they had issues with them. And then the next question was uh, if they observed it in the past year. So it was a recent happening and it wasn't just like five years ago. And 90% said yes. So they had issues with the plants, could it be parasites, uh, diseases, and so on. Okay, so we know this issue is happening. So we need to kind of understand uh, what are they doing about it? So how much does it cost? And apparently for 10 of, the, like 90% of them, just looking at the graph, uh, it's only the first part that's important is that for the rest, it doesn't cost anything. This is because there is a Ministry of Food and Agriculture, uh, MOFA, that is providing the cure for the farmers. And only one person, uh, from, it's a bit uh, difficult to read the data, but they said that uh, when they find this disease, they just uproot it, they just delete it. So the, all of this crop is lost. So all of this farm that we could have had is now lost and then uh, we cannot use it anymore. Okay, so we understand they have an issue. So when you think about the solution that we mentioned about phone, right? So we have to take a photo. Uh, it's important for them to have, it's a requirement for them to have a smartphone to take a photo, right? And we asked, uh, okay, do you have a mobile phone of any type? And again, 90% said yes, but 1% uh, uh, said no. But the important thing is that if we asked, is it a smartphone and you have access to WhatsApp so you can send us a picture for us to analyze? And all of, all of them said no. So this already meant a really huge bottleneck or a problem, major problem in our development. And we need to address this. Um, and of course, we in the end asked, so if you had the solution, would you use it? Like for example, tech taking with the phone, everyone of course said yes. So looking at the bigger picture, understood that we don't only need to detect the, the phone with the phone, we also need to find a solution for them somehow to be addressed. So uh, Elizabeth, uh, another uh, group member of ours, uh, said there is this thing that, uni uh, that the farmers can contact MOFA to get the cure. And in order to get the cure, they need to contact the extension officers. So she went uh, to ask a questionnaire to the extension officer and asked them, what are your main issues to providing the cure to the farmers, right? So if we detect it, right, the next step would be getting the cure to the farmer. Okay, and then uh, there are multiple issues actually that uh, was discovered by extension officers or by us is that most of these extension officers do not have access to roads, cars, proper facilities to be able to travel from the extension officer to the center uh, to the farmer. And uh, another important uh, problem was they didn't have uh, the right location of the farmers. So 
uh, think of it as like trying to explain on the phone or go to the left, right, left. This means that it can take days and ages for just one extension officer to find uh, one farmer. So uh, while gathering all of this information, we try to create a use case. So how is this whole process happening? And on which part of this chain we can solve a solution or like where can we attack in this case? So a farmer sends a, a disease, right? Uh, that he has a problem. In this case, we took a specific approach of maize as a plant uh, to not diversify a lot because later on you can take other plants indeed. And uh, what is happening? So if, it has a, if the farmer has a disease, a problem or with the infestation, he contacts an extension officer. And after he contacts an extension officer, extension officer has to manually go and check if this farmer had an issue with the maize. If it detects this issue, so think of it as traveling, going back and forth many times, uh, he has to contact MOFA to get the cure from MOFA. So the MOFA would give the cure to the, far, uh, to the officer and afterwards the officer can give the cure to the farmer. So you can see this whole process can take months and uh, more, uh, which is a really big issue because when we talk to a farmer, he said these parasites can kill the whole half of the crops in two weeks only. So even if we detect this using an AI, like in five minutes, uh, that this, uh, the, this plant has an issue, we're not going to solve the problem. So it's really important to take consideration the context and the environment. That's why we thought of doing it on hands research with the people. So even if we created like the best AI, take seconds to detect, this wanna solve any of their problems because they still wanna get the cure. So we need to go even further. And this is how we thought of this spot cure, uh, a solution that would uh, be able to solve uh, hopefully this problem. So if uh, we started, if we need the requirement of a farmer having a smartphone, but if he doesn't, he can get one from community centers. Uh, as said by one of our group members, community centers in Ghana are really sharing and caring. So if we can have one phone for everyone uh, in the community center, they would be able to share uh, between uh, people, so the farmers. So if you think you have an issue, you just take a photo weekly or something like this and then return the photo. This way, uh, when you return the phone uh, from the community center or yourself, you can send this photo using a WhatsApp number. So this way, our, our program would take this photo and start analyzing these images uh, that, uh, for example, if there is an uh, issue, like uh, using AI image detection of neural networks or something other than that, uh, which would be located in MOFA Center, so Minister of uh, Food and Agriculture, we'll be, we'll be able to detect if this uh, plant has disease or not. The reasoning this is important is that we can cut a lot of time. So if we detect there is a disease, we can already inform extension officers, oh, we found a disease. This is important. You don't need to go and manually check it because we have, let's say, validity of 99% of the times we are correct or so on. Uh, of course, this is, again, uh, something that we have to test, uh, prototype, but for the time being, uh, let's say we have it and then uh, continue. And uh, this means that if we can assure the extension officer that there is a disease, it means that he doesn't need to, first of all, farmer doesn't need to travel to the extension officer, request him to come and check, and an extension officer going back, uh, checking if there is a disease, and then coming back. So we cut all of these steps into one step of the farmer taking a photo and sending to us. After the photo is sent to us, extension officer asks cure from MOFA, uh, and then MOFA uh, gives the cure to the extension officer, which the last step would be just giving it to the farmer. So the stakeholders again here are the farmer, as you understand, extension officer, community center members to provide the phones, uh, MOFA and us, the developers of the program. But of course, it's really important that any project needs to be sustainable indeed. Uh, if we cannot somehow monetize the system, it won't uh, develop or uh, won't sustain, uh, like let's say uh, after the project funding. So somehow we're thinking of funding uh, uh, as a method of monthly subscription or by paying by phone uh, use. So if you take a phone photo, you pay like five Ghanaian cents and, uh, for the service. And then uh, this way we can uh, develop the system into the future cycles. So it's, I think it's really important to take into consideration this also. But uh, I think uh, this is the biggest uh, thing that we found out in this research is that you always need to take into consideration the context. Even if we develop an AI solution that would detect images, uh, diseases, uh, we wouldn't solve any problem here. So I think that's the biggest 
a thing that to take home. So thank, thank you for your attention, for everyone. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Raj. Um, Very nice presentation. Um, so, um, are there any questions from the audience, please, to uh, to group number three, to the spot cure? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Hey, Raj, um, thank you for a very nice presentation. It's, it was very interesting and a lot of work definitely um, I see that has been put into it. Uh, my question was in regards to the willingness um, of the farmers to actually cooperate uh, with uh, such, a, such a change in the, the process of it. Uh, did you guys also got to um, ask for feedback from farmers whether they will be willing to have these changes, uh, necessary changes uh, implemented into the whole system of it or not. Yeah, I do see that there was also, um, yeah, right before this, I think, uh, a slide right before that, yeah. Um, if smartphone, do you use WhatsApp? Yeah, right, like, um, so a lot of people, like, they don't really use WhatsApp. So I think, like, there's, um, yeah, there's a additional hurdle in, like, you will need to establish some sort of a new behavior change among uh, farmers as well in order to do this. So have you also thought about it uh, in regards to what what are the other aspects that also needs to be put into this other than just changing the, the whole uh, process of it? So the important part here is that, of course, with any system, you have some requirements. So without a smartphone, this solution wouldn't work because using a standard phone with uh, SMS, you know, the two, two, I think it's 200 kilobytes limit of the photo size. This is not feasible. You cannot detect anything. In it. So we had to establish some requirements, which one of them was mobile phones, smartphones. And okay, so we have this requirement, we need to find a solution. So what we did is try to ask the farmers, okay, so you have to adapt, right? Uh, now, in order to have this disease detected, you have to use uh, a phone detection system. Would you use it? We asked the farmers. And all of them responded, yes. But the biggest issue was that uh, the farmers weren't willing to pay for the service. So in this second case, they are not willing to pay anything for services, uh, help, support, all of this stuff, as long as it's not materialistic. So if they get the fertilizer, it's a material, seeds, they'll pay for it. If it's a service, they do not understand this. So their mentality doesn't understand this, which uh, is a, a big issue, but we couldn't tackle this yet. And we thought of, uh, again, monthly service or just pay by phone, by photo. But you are correct. So this is one of the things we have to consider as uh, farmers sometimes have, you know, um, mentality that we do not understand, uh, we cannot go with. Uh, I think Elizabeth might be able to answer a bit better in this yeah. case. Yeah, so okay, so I other. just want to uh, add a little to what uh, Raj already said. Um, during our interview with farmers, we also interviewed extension officers. And here, farmers do not listen to anyone except the extension officer. So if we <laughs> get the extension officers to, um, buy into our idea, which they already love it. It is very easy to convince the farmers um, to accept this change. So. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, okay, I think that, uh, yeah, this, this answers well the question, I think, uh, Sergio. Um, and we must uh, go to the next group. So I think uh, group uh, number three very much, uh, very good work, uh, applause for you. Um, so I invite number uh, uh, number four, and that is group uh, Farman, uh, Autonomous Irrigation in Ghana, and um, yes, Arvignes, uh, Ajibola, um, uh, Gideon, and Srinivas uh, are the group members of group number four. So. Can you please share your screen? Yes, we are seeing your screen. Srinivas, we don't hear you. Are we audible now? Yes, yes. We Great. Yes. So we are, we are basically called farmen because uh, due to COVID, we are divided by nations. 
and uh, due to ICT 4D, uh, we are united by farmers with the use case in hand, which is autonomous irrigation in Ghana. So, yeah, moving on. Uh, this is our team, and we have we have a quite a diverse team. Uh, Ajibola is from uh, Nigeria, Gideon from Ghana, Vignesh and myself Funimas. We are from India, and. Uh, yeah, uh, basically we, we managed to collaborate and bring out a solution, which I'll be explaining the further si slides. So uh, getting into the uh, solution, I will I will like to introduce the problem and why are we doing this? So Gideon took the place of collaborating with the farmers and getting the inputs. And we find that there are long dry seasons in Ghana right now, and maybe in Africa as well. So getting that into account, uh, the need of water is much more than usual for farmers. And uh, there are systems as well, which is controlled by humans, but uh, which ends up in forgetting. I mean, humans forget, they have, they have the tendency to forget as well. So uh, over there, there's a lot of water wastage, uh, even when there are apps to control uh, irrigation manually. I mean, it's done manually. The application control is done manually. So water wastage happens, which is one of the environment factors as a problem over here. And that is why our objective brings to a solution where we could create a better agriculture productivity in Ghana and also conserve water with uh, appropriate uh, conservation of environment as well. So letting you know a little bit of uh, Ghana. So Ghana basically provides 37% uh, of GDP uh, towards agriculture and it employs 56% of the popul economic population in farming as well as uh, about, say, uh, 70 80 percent of uh, smaller farm holders uh, are uh, involved with the agriculture production as well and apart from that 38 percent of agriculture land is basically cultivated in ghana and uh, out of which 2.74 million households are involved in farming but the only one problem which we saw was which Gideon brought to us was productivity was generally low and uh, water consumption was not really uh, possible so yeah Coming to the next one, there's water usage. Yeah, coming to the water usage part, 48% 40, of uh, water is used for agriculture, out of which 5% is groundwater, basically. This is something related to how Ghana is using water and what kind of agriculture information they have. Now, with the problem, we came to a solution as a team where uh, Vignesh and Gideon brought us a, a solution and uh, an idea behind the problem. And I was involved with the AI technology, basically to build out a possible solution with the data in hand. So we have the data collected from the IoT hub. So like the weather conditions and the farmer's knowledge, which was really important for the context of farming and water and also the water level storage and like the land conditions, like the soil types and the crop types. And apart from that, we do the data analysis. We will be doing a data analysis. Like we need to consider what data needs to be there in order to build an algorithm for the model to work automatically without any human assistance. So then we'll be uh, doing a pilot test in Ghana if the COVID is gone and we'll be trying to implement in a certain farm with the uh, help of the government and the NGOs. Coming to the AI process and the ML process, the data collection and uh, the prediction system is the main two things which were divided here. Data collection is done with the help of the IoT company. Uh, basically we collect data and uh, transfer the data to the system uh, in the AI process and basically, and we train the data for the system to make decisions on when the next irrigation is supposed to happen automatically and uh, when it's supposed to switch off automatically based on various factors like the soil and the crop types and the properties and also weather information. And also we bring in irrigation reports, the history of irrigation so that uh, the model also predicts according to what has happened earlier and also the context of uh, farmers, the knowledge of behind farmers also adds a value to the system as well. So yes, we have done we have done the solution and we have brought everything in, but we, we just analyzed that can be risk. Every product, every, every application has got its own risk. So our, our risks are basically divided into the four and we have the uh, cost challenge. Basically, this, this challenge can be uh, avoided by bringing the government and NGO to support us with the uh, funding. And also power supply in Ghana is really bad. So in a sense, uh, there's power cuts. So we thought of using solar energy to plant it in Ghana. So yeah, which can be a possible solution for regular power supply for our system where internet is really necessary. And awareness. 
behind the system is really important before we take it to all the farmers in Ghana, maximum number of farmers. So far, we only narrowed our farmer base. We are not uh, completely uh, generalized. Farmers, only the commercial farmers will be able to use this, but in order for everyone to use it, we need, we are trying to make workshops and training for all the farmers to understand uh, the concept behind this. And uh, every system has got a failure, and our system has got a backup system, which is called expert systems, which doesn't need really data behind it, which needs only farmers uh, knowledge and the rules set behind it, which is called the expert system. The farmers are the expert and the system which runs behind that is called the expert system. And uh, the stakeholders uh, and their purposes for this uh, list here, basically the stakeholders who were involved are farmers, uh, the IoT companies, the government, and basically we, the uh, farming people. So the farmers, they are involved with uh, giving us the indigenous knowledge and also they're involved in their own business activities as well as they're, they're also involved in giving us the knowledge behind specific regions. Each and every region has got their own crops, own types, and own uh, weather conditions. Apart from that, IoT companies, they are involved in giving us the right uh, set of data and also analysis of the data. And government and NGOs help up with the resource allocations, like this is the land or the crop type, or also uh, involving with the deployment of the application in a particular farm, and also funding, which is really important for uh, the farmers to get the system. And apart from that, we are, we are the developers and the idea creators in this uh, system. So basically, uh, until now, we have done the design, but the rest, thing, the rest of the thing would take around five to six months to basically analyze the data and get the appropriate model into place for farmers to uh, leverage their business activities and decision-making systems. So we are going to collect the data and do a bit of data analysis and bring out an artificial intelligence model and deploy the platform in the farm, so in the environment to understand and get the feedback. So what we see as benefits in the system is, first, it improves agriculture productivity, which was the main problem we analyzed in our first slide. And uh, we could save water efficiently, which is the second important problem. Well, uh, according to the data, according to our research, water, water wasn't a great scarcity in terms in Ghana, but it is, uh, I mean, we could save water efficiently in the other manner. And we could also overcome uh, manual inefficiency by the farmers to keep using the app every time, every day, every minute. Instead, they get notification about saying, okay, this is going to happen this time. The farmers just gets the information, which is absolutely the uh, goal of the app. And at the end, it's going to predict environmental factors, which can help farmers to decide on their crop production and their business, and also their decision-making strategies. And this is a small trial prototype or design we built. So to understand, uh, this was done by Vignesh, uh, to understand uh, how farmers can use it. So far, every farmer will have their own uh, account or, or own uh, registration done. Based on the account, they can select each of the three given options. So irrigation app, reports, and factors. So when you go to the irrigation app, it will give you the, uh, basically the goal of the irrigation app is to give you the uh, next predicted irrigation time, which is done automatically by the system. So it will give farmer the information, what are the factors involved, like the seasons, the water needed, and the crop type, and what is the crop maturity, which day uh, is the crop being grown today. I mean, it's the 34th day, and uh, the rain probability as well. And the farmer can also have a small uh, leverage of modifying the time, but which is not really necessary, but we are just given the, uh, that application to make sure they get that application instead of being automatically done. And then apart from that, we have the report section in the uh, third, third image, which is basically gives you the uh, various reports of what has happened uh, over the past few days, or past few weeks, or past few months for the irrigation which has happened and how are the crops being affected, what are the most crops grown and all the, all the various uh, analysis. And also the factors based on the reports are given in the last one, which is basically the soil type factor, the crop types, the various environmental factors like the rainfall, humidity and temperature, and also the season. But apart from that, we also are concerned with the indigenous knowledge. So we give a farmer a particular feedback, so feedback form or uh, somewhere they can bring their factors inside, like they can bring their knowledge inside to add into the system. And we can also update uh, the algorithm or tell the AI learning model to see, uh, take use of uh, farmers' indigenous knowledge to build the system as well. So our future work would end up developing the application, collecting data from sensors, 
and also discussing with the local people and validating the data. And after that, we'll be training the AI model and we'll be testing it in the, uh, uh, in the system, in the environment, and we'll be collecting feedbacks from the people in and around uh, the place in, in the region. And furthermore, we'll be making improvements. So coming to the end, uh, what we learned from this uh, particular project all the from the course was basically, basically the teamwork, everyone are far away and we ended up doing a great work in collaborating and we had our time schedules right on stack, right, right on proper, uh, proper, proper times. And also we were able to analyze various problems in rural areas. It was, it was not just about developing the application. But also, we, we were much more uh, able to understand what really happens in Ghana in terms of low resource environments. How, how are the technology used there? Is there Wi-Fi regularly used? Or are they able to do some consumption in water or not? I mean, there are a lot of, everything is not the same all over the world. So we were able to understand the difficulties in the, in the region as well. And local people knowledge were really wise enough to give us more uh, inputs to our system as well. And I would end up with a small conclusion talking that A can be, yeah, in terms of a knife can be used for cooking so and crafting. In the same way, A can be used for better purposes and we are here to, we are the creators and influencers. It's, it's good that we keep using it for uh, the better and for the humanity as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for us for a nice presentation. Very good, applause. So I'm asking the audience if you have some questions to um, group number four. Very, very nice and very uh, complete and uh, an interesting project. So do I see any questions? Well, I can read some comment. I think this is a comment. Congrat congratulations, everyone. I enjoyed the presentations. This is from Zika. Um, and I see the full value of the course. The challenge uh, was in how to create value from the diverse background and expertise of team members. The outcomes we saw depended mainly on the balance. I have seen illustrations of multidisciplinary research, putting oneself in the shoe of the community members, seeing the world view and feeling their pains. That's well, that's, a, that's this is very nice. Ah, that is from Prof. Nara. That is very nice um, for, uh, for the teams. So thank you, Prof. Nara. Um, so I, I don't see any questions and I don't see any hands raised. Uh, are there any? Let me um, see. Wendelin, do you have a question? Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Wendelin Taip. I'm a colleague of Anna and Hans. And it's very nice to be here and see all these presentations. So um, thank you for your presentation. Very interesting. It seems quite ambitious, your uh, present, uh, this, this um, system. And what I can get, but maybe uh, you can confirm this or maybe deny, it seems that it's depend dependable upon uh, quite a lot of data. And is it easy to, uh, to access? Is all this data that you would need for the creation of this app is that accessible, uh, you think, or? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, we, as, I, as I told you, uh, we, we have uh, Gideon helped us in contacting with the IoT company, and they said that we can give you uh, data for it. And apart from that, uh, I, that's also a problem when you, when you talk about uh, scalability or accessibility. Yes, we can only narrow to the commercial farmers where they already keep using different kinds of irrigation, and they have the, where they have the access to uh, IoT data or the sensors which can be placed in their farm. But uh, when it comes to other farmers, the only solution is to uh, educate them and train them how the system can be used and give them the trust behind the system rather than just jumping and telling this is a system for you. So this is the solution we are trying to get to. Uh, yeah, we have a narrow, narrow, narrow stakeholder or narrow goal now. Okay, thank you. Interesting. Thank you for your answer. Okay, well, um, if there are no more questions or hands raised, then I'm, uh, I will announce the next group.